Hello, and welcome to After Effects Tech Desk. Today, I wanted to do a quick run through through all of the preference settings and just talk about the ones that I think are important and the ones that I've changed and maybe demystify some of these. Uh, the first thing I'll go ahead and do is show you what you may have clicked on this video for, seeing the thumbnail, the secret preference setting. You see that I don't have that accessible right here. So what we're going to do to get to that is hold down shift while we open up any of these preference settings. And now you will see secret inside of these little tabs on the left. This is an option to disable layer cache. And this might be something you want to use if you're running into problems with rendering your video, um, or your better video not finishing due to running out of memory. Basically, After Effects will try to use all of your available memory to uh, for the entire rendering of the video. And if your scene is complex and uh, you're running out of it, you can force it to clear that memory. In this case, I'm using it every zero frame. So every frame, it's going to clear out the memory and recalculate. And that's a pretty good way to avoid those uh, RAM underruns. Okay, so back up to the general tab here. Uh, most of these are pretty self-explanatory, so I'm just going to kind of touch on those very, very briefly. Show tool tips is what you would see the little uh, when you hover over something and it tells you what it is. Create layers at composition start time, pretty obvious. Switches affect nested comps. Um, a lot of these come on as default. The main one that I usually change is this default spatial interpolation to linear. What that means is when you set keyframes on a position of something, it's going to create a linear path as opposed if this is ticked. If it's unticked, it will create a Bezier path, meaning it will have handles on the path and it might not move in a linear way. If you have questions about that, I have another video on my channel here to show you how that works. Uh, preserve constant vertex and feather point count. I don't really use the feathering with masks, so I just keep this as is. Pen tool shortcut toggles between pen and mask feather tools. Um, if this is on, it will just go between those two, pen and the feather tools. If this is unticked. It will also go between add points, subtract points, and the other pen settings. Fortunately, it will not go to the convert anchor point tool, which is the main one I always want to link it to. You might be able to do that in keyboard preferences and we can, there will be another video up here where you can go check out how to do that. Center anchor point and new shape layers. Uh, I think this is probably opposed to the top left corner. Um, synchronized time of all related items. That's going to have to do with pre-comping and where you're time uh, basically if you click into a different comp will your time marker be at the same time code or the same relative time to the main comp that you're in synchronized tile let's see create split layers above original layer i don't know where else it would pick it use system color picker that's an old you know if you want to use the old windows i believe it's like a circle it has the little uh swatch options in the bottom Maybe we can find a picture of that flash it on screen. Dynamic link use project file with highest number. Um, if you use dynamic link a lot, that might be an option you want to tick. I keep it off and I have a different workflow where I save a copy as a backup and keep my main file the same name. Play sound when render finishes. If that's irritating you, you might turn that off. Enable home screen is the Screen that comes up when you start that gives you shows you tips and also uh, recent files, I believe. Show system compatibility issues. If you want to turn that off, I guess you could. I don't know why you would want to. I guess if there's an issue that you know is not really an issue and you want to just ignore it, you could turn that off there. You could also reveal where these preferences are saved in Explorer or bring in your preferences from other versions if they did not migrate. Previews is just about how when you RAM preview something, these defaults 
A lot of this is changeable in the RAM preview menu, but if it's just how it's going to default. Mute audio, I like to keep that ticked, otherwise you'll hear that weird warbling voice maybe, or a slowdown in audio. Usually it's not too helpful. Display, uh, if you want to change how the motion paths look, you can do that. Um, I generally don't change anything in this file, or this file really. Still footage, you can change if you have a certain length that you want to keep them when you bring them in. It's probably going to be a per project specific thing. Output is if you need to segment your sequences at a certain file size or file amount. This used to be important for days of rendering to DVD or other kind of fixed size media. Um, probably not a huge issue anymore. If you want to change the color of your grid lines or your guides, you could do that here. You could also change the action safety um, that is built in. Label defaults, this is where you can pick different label colors that are available to you for different layers. And you can rename them too, or change the color. So if you want that to be a little bit brighter, let's say we want that to now be bright red. You can see that that'll update up here. This is where you would apply certain types of colors to certain types of media. So all compositions would be sandstone. All video would be aqua, all audio is seafoam. So you can change those if you're working in a certain way. Media and disk cache is um, <clears throat> one of the menus that I definitely come into often. I will often come in here that you can set a, this will default to your project folder wherever you have this uh, installed. But if you want to put it that cache onto a different disk or a different location, which I do recommend, you can check out at this video about how to best set up your media workflow, your data pipeline over here. Uh, sometimes when I am having problems, I will come over and empty the disk cache, and that's a solution a lot of times. The database is a smaller file and more like just a text file that kind of tells everything where it is. You can, if I'm cleaning the empty disk cache, I'll often clean this also. Video preview, if you have an external monitor and you want, or even your main monitor, when you ran preview, you want it to show up full screen. You can do that by enabling this. And then when you preview, it will show as um, a full screen display. You can choose which monitor that will go to. I have two monitors selected, so you can choose which one. Appearance, this is where you can choose kind of the brightness for your interface, whether to use in gradients on the labels, cycle mask colors for new masks that can be kind of handy or not, depending on your preference. Or um, this is also where to change color of your highlights and the brightness of them. If you're not quite sure how to get this and you're not seeing this change color button, Check out my video about how to do that. Customize your user interface color, and you'll see how to do that. New project, if you won't want to use the same project file all the time for a template, you could set that location here. And here's where you want to set your autosave. I generally keep this turned on, although I may set different time amounts. If I'm working on a file and it's kind of slow to save, that can be irritating to have it go off too often. So I will sometimes change this to be a higher number. Or more often, if I'm doing a lot of things that I'm nervous about losing. Memory and performance is where you're going to set your system memory and how much you're going to leave for other applications. 64 total. I'm going to leave 12 gigabytes for other applications, meaning After Effects and Media Encoder have 52 gigabytes to use. Audio hardware, this is where you can set your audio output and your latency. There's no input, so you won't see anything there. If for some reason, you want to send your left and right 
channel to the same speaker. You can do that here. Sync settings. This is for your account and where you have keyboard shortcuts and other preferences set and a couple other things generally related to your Adobe Creative Cloud account. Type is something I don't come into often, but I think it might be useful if you're working in another language besides English. Scripting and expressions can be helpful. If you use these a lot, you might want to change the colors here. You can pick different schemes for what types of code is highlighted in which way. 3D is about the handles and how to switch between the controls. If you're working in 3D space, basically this will allow you to use the numbers instead of the letters that are come as default. You can also choose if your mouse wants to interact with that. And you can even switch your drag control. So if you drag it the same way, it actually reverses the movement. That's just a preference. And if you find that it's helpful, go ahead and set it. All right, that is my rundown of the preferences. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try to get them answered right away. And if you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe and then check out the rest of the channel for other useful videos about tips and workflows and After Effects. Thanks and see you next time.